Hey guys, welcome back to YouTube channel of red.logics.com. My name is Ritesh Patel and today we're going to be jumping in on a brand new product from Novastar called VX1000. It is super exciting, super slick product. Can't wait to show you guys. Thank you for joining in. So as you guys know, we had a VX4S initially that which turned into VX4SN, which is a newer one. Uh, we've also had a VX6S from Novastar, which had a six output ports on it. And then came the VX16S, which still hasn't made its way to US in most cases. Uh, it, however, it's a brand new product, and now we have a VX1000. Alright, so we're gonna talk about a couple of things here. Um, so overall the whole unit is super slick in my opinion. Uh, the design of it I'm absolutely in love with. Uh, they have few buttons in the front, uh, full color LED display. All the buttons have been changed out from the previous VX series that we have seen before. As you may realize all the previous buttons used to be white and they had a full just a LED on in the back with a black text. This buttons are black with the clear pass through text and then there's LED in the back of course. It also has a couple of different functions where the normal buttons are blue or sorry white and then when they're being used they flash blue which is another great feature that I liked about it. Um, the screen went from being a single color to now multicolor screen uh, which is what they've integrated into VX16 recently and uh, VX1000 is again very very superior compared to all the previous models in my opinion. In the back you have control ethernet port, you have a USB port, um, you have genlock input output, you have 3G SDI input with a loop out, you have HDMI 1.4 with a loop out, a second HDMI 1.4 input, and then you also have two DVI inputs, one with the loop out, one without it. And that's all your inputs. Uh, 
the great thing that they've done on DVI input is that DVI is technically using a DVI port, but it's using HDMI 1.4 protocol internal chip on it, which means you can do dual link DVI uh, signals through that as well. Another great feature is it has a monitor output with HDMI 1.3 port. And in this particular model, now they're letting you control the output resolution of that 1.3 HDMI output going to monitor preview monitor. Uh, you can change all the way up to 1920 by 1200 on that. Um, and there are some preset resolutions. There's not much customization to be done on there. Another great feature about this uh, VX1000 unit is that it has two optical ports on the back of the unit. Now, normally in the previous models like a UHD Pro, UHD Pro Junior, or MCTL 4K, you've been able to send the signal out of the optical ports and extend them over fiber to uh, CVT-10S or CVT-4KS. Well, in this particular model, it has multiple modes. So in mode one, it's a video controller, which is a normal function. You would use this as a controller, send a signal over fiber, receive it on the CVT-10S or uh, 4KS, and extend your signal to the screen. The second working mode is you can use one VX1000 as a controller. You can put a second VX1000 in a fiber receiver mode and use that as your CVT essentially. And that unit just becomes a dumb converter from fiber to CAT5 for all 10 ports. And the third working mode on it is a bypass mode. Now what the bypass mode does, it bypasses actual uh, processing chips. It takes away your control from, uh, it does not give you main layer, PIP1, PIP2 layers. It only does pixel to pixel. Whatever comes in is what goes out. And the reason why we like this mode particularly is because you can use this in ascending card mode basically. So you have low latency on your signal processing. Another use case for this is that it can use external device called HDR Master 4K. It's a video processor that can take in a standard definition video, HD definition video, and convert it to HDR, and then send it down the fiber to VX1000S as an input. So you can actually use those fiber optical ports as a HDR input signals coming into this because this particular model, the processors, chips that are built into this do not allow you to process HDR. So uh, you're gonna have to use that external device to get the HDR signals into this. Another great feature I really, really liked about this processor is that it has three scalers, not one, three total scalers which means you can get three layers now using a VCAN software or from the front uh, uh, from the front screen, you should be able to control a main and a two pips, uh, which are, you know, three different windows of the content going to your LED screen. So if you have, I don't know, if you're trying to do a background with the HDMI source with the SDI, you're trying to do a pip on pip off type of thing you have now total three scalers. It does auto scale as it did before and all the customization, cropping, all that good stuff is still in there. Uh, let's see, other than that, uh, everything else seems pretty normal with this processor. You have uh, one single lockable OSHA, cord, OSHA port in the back for the power with the power switch right above it. You have 10 ethernet outputs which are you know just 6.5 million pixels of processing power there. That's all we have today for VX1000 guys. Uh, thank you for tuning in into our Red Dot Logics YouTube channel. My name is Ritesh Patel. Our website is www.reddotlogics.com, and my email address is ritesh at reddotlogics.com. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, if you guys need to buy any Novastar equipments, we are authorized dealers located in Los Angeles area, please send us an email. Thank you.